This is Tarek El Aysami, Venezuela's former oil minister, a once powerful oil czar, and confidant of President Nicolas Maduro. Over time, El Aysami has fallen from grace, and now he's in handcuffs. Imagine that a decision in favor of the Guyanese people, Exxon Mobil and the Guyana government appeal this decision. El Aysami was arrested over allegations of corruption. And he's not the only one. Former Finance Minister Simon Zerpa and businessman Samark Lopez have been arrested as well. El Ministerio Público. And it was revealed over the weekend that the Guyana government, led by the Attorney General, right, secretly, secretly they're saying, that's what they're saying, secretly moved this matter to the Caribbean Court of Justice. Why? For their role in an alleged plot to make hundreds of millions of dollars in oil proceeds disappear. Here's what happened. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Since last year, a number of top officials have been pulled up for allegedly siphoning off billions of dollars in oil proceeds. There have been investigations, resignations, and now a major arrest. The country's former oil minister and confidant of President Nicolas Maduro has been arrested. So what's behind the purge? And will the presidential election schedule for July, with the election schedule for July, does the timing have a role to play here? Our next report tells you. This is Tarek El Aysami, Venezuela's former oil minister, a once powerful oil czar and confidant of President Nicolas Maduro. Over time, El Aysami has fallen from grace and now he's in handcuffs. El Aysami was arrested over allegations of corruption. And he's not the only one. Former finance minister Simon Zerpa and businessman Samark Lopez have been arrested as well. El Ministerio Público. The public ministry in the next few hours will charge these three detainees with the crimes of treason, appropriation or distraction of public property, flaunting of relationships and influence, and money laundering and association. A plurality of crimes that will culminate in an exemplary punishment for these scoundrels. Their arrests are part of a wider government purge. There are charges against more than 50 people including Venezuela's most important business and political figures. Why? For their role in an alleged plot to make hundreds of millions of dollars in oil proceeds disappear. Here's what happened. According to the nation's top prosecutor, former oil minister El Aysami and his co-conspirators were selling Venezuelan oil. They signed contracts with the state oil major, loaded the crude on ships and sold the oil. But not all payments were made to the oil company because the former ministers didn't pass the funds to the country's central bank. They directly managed the shipments of crude. Plus, they received dividends from the sale and traded these sums of money to convert them to crypto assets, which regulatory bodies could not trace. The Venezuelan big guns reportedly misused their positions to carry out these illegal operations and made huge profits. El Aysami reportedly used the illicit funds to work on his private houses. Some used it to fund their political campaigns. But just how much money was going around? The government has not declared the exact sum, but reports say as of 2022, the state oil company was owed tens of billions of dollars which left a large hole in its accounts. So an investigation began in March last year, and it shook Venezuela. Amid a slew of charges, El Aysami resigned from his position, and now, a year later, he has been arrested. It's a remarkable reversal of fortune for one of Venezuela's most powerful men. Corruption is rampant in Venezuela. The South American nation is considered one of the most corrupt in the world. That's according to the Corruption Perception Index. So why are corrupt leaders suddenly in trouble? The timing is crucial. President Maduro is running for re-election in July this year. So is this an image cleanup exercise for him? Or have his aides simply fallen out of favor? And the big question is, 
Will the probe uncover the slime or will it be an eyewash? This is what's going on in Venezuela. Allegedly, one of the world's most corrupt countries. Allegedly, the country that is one of the worst right now when it comes down to immigration and losing their citizens to all over the world, migrating and running away from the alleged oppression that's going on in that country there. We know that in Guyana we got our share of issues that we're dealing with right now. But I wonder if persons are really paying attention to the comparisons in the government and what's really going on. I wonder if persons are paying attention to the fact that look, in Venezuela, persons are actually being prosecuted for some of the things that are just being swept under the rug and spoken about in Guyana. In Venezuela, persons are actually finding themselves in criminal incidents, in criminal situations, allegedly, because of things that they would have done while serving in high-ranking places in the government, allegedly. But what's going on in Guyana? We find ourselves in a situation where our own government is taking us to court because of a company, allegedly, that we took to court and they didn't like the ruling. They're saying that the ruling might close down everything that's going on in the country right now with the present I'll deal. It's that big of a thing. So the government should have a say. And what they say is that, look, let it go forward the way that it is so that infrastructural growth and development can continue as is right now. The people of Guyana versus the government of Guyana and seemingly, allegedly, ExxonMobil seems to be on the side with the government. So then where does the Guyanese people stand? Who is there to protect the interests of the Guyanese people? You share your feedback with me in the comment section. What do you think about this? And if you haven't already, drop a like. Drop a like and promote this video in the algorithm. Drop a like and send this out to as many persons as possible that need to see this on their page and need to see this on their For You pop-up. Why? Because this is very important. This type of information can just fly over people's head or be mentioned just once in the algorithm. We have to make sure that we keep this consistent and keep it, keep our finger on this button right now because it's important. It's important not just only to us, it's important to the next generation and all the generations before us that already went through the struggles and the hardships so that Guyana could be an established country and be in the way that it is right now. So now that we have the possibility to reap the benefits, why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? Because in the eventuality of an oil spill, where will the Guyanese people be? Who will be there to make sure that this company takes care of what they should take care of? Because we want a complete a complete guarantee from the parent company that in the eventuality of a spill they will completely compensate and cover all damages that's what Guyana want for the betterment of every person that's living there it was revealed recently in the Exxon mobile matter just to give you a little synopsis what happened is that the government, the, or the people, let me put it this way, the people of Guyana took Exxon Mobil to court. Somebody representing, the purported to have represented, said they get um, standing, took the matter to court. Just to, to, in terms, they were looking for this um, guarantee money in case they get an oil spill, something to be lodged. And Justice Kisun ruled that Exxon Mobil should lodge two billion U.S. dollars in case there is a spill for the cleaning up. So you had a ruling in favor 
of the Guyanese public. $2 billion must large. And the experts will tell you, including Dr. Vincent Adams, that there is no money for oil spill um, cleanup. They quoted other figures, other cleanup, how much billions and billions and billions of dollars it cost. ExxonMobil appealed that matter. And they were joined, the guy in the government joined ExxonMobil in appealing that decision. Imagine that, a decision in favor of the Guyanese people. ExxonMobil and the Guyana government appealed this decision. And just recently, over the weekend, we learned that the government of Guyana, led by the Attorney General, because, you know, well, I should say, the appeal, when it went to the appeal court of Guyana, they upheld the decision of Justice Kisun. In other words, yes, ExxonMobil must launch this uh, to, to, to billion Guyana dollars. And it was revealed over the weekend that the Guyana government, led by the Attorney General, right, secretly, secretly they're saying, that's what they're saying, secretly move this matter to the Caribbean Court of Justice. Can you imagine that? A decision in favor of the Guyanese people against ExxonMobil is appealed and the Guyana government joins the appeal against the Guyanese. And when they lose at the appeal court, they have quietly moved to the CCJ. That is what is being reported. They have quietly moved to the CCJ to challenge the decision that is in favor of the Guyanese and rendered by the um, Guyana Court of Appeal. That is what, that's the story we be in. So I understand what Mr. Conway is coming from when he said in this um, credit union case, don't be surprised if um, the government as represented by the Attorney General were to appeal. But you know, when you say that, I want to remind you what um, Glenn, uh, what G.H.K. Lal said, let me put it up here. G.H.K. Lal, I got to quote this repeatedly. Read what he says there by my, my uh, fellow uh, my students. He said, what we have today is not a government, but a gang of gangsters. For the most part, what Guyanese have for leaders today are nothing uh, but out of control, lunatics, pathological liars, unreconstructed racists, and political sadists. The UNHCR exposed all this and more in one fell swoop. Unless stopped, the PPP government will drown Guyana with it, with, with it, as its long descent begins. That is what GSK Lyle said. So when you hear in this matter that I referenced there a while ago, the, the government appealing a case that went in favor of the Guyanese people. Yeah, he's a gang of gangsters, according to GSK Lal. They say he's a gang of gangsters. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. He, look at the perception that is created about him by smelly smell. I fucking know, nentity degenerate hungry belly low life woman. Um, 